Afghanistan is one of the most heavily mine affected countries of the world. Afghanistan is rich in history, richer than many of us could imagine. This entire country has witnessed different eras and civilizations that have gathered a variety of culture and religion. Many discoveries have been made, and with it, many questions remain. Let's uncover some of Afghanistan's mysteries. From Afghanistan's Blue Mosque to the Lost Empire, here are 20 strange things found in Afghanistan. <sighs> Number 20. A pig named Kanzir is the pig in Afghanistan. Afghanistan was one of the earliest farming communities in the world. However, there are no pig farms and simply no selling of pigs at all. That's right, as the consumption of pork is considered haram, which basically means forbidden, there is no need for the raising and selling of pigs. Most Afghan people have never even seen a pig before. That is, until 2002, when China gifted Afghanistan a pig named Kanzir and a female pig for companionship. He was the first pig in Afghanistan. And what better name to give him than Kanzir, which literally translates to pig. <laughs> Very creative. Both Kanzir and the female pig were placed in the Kabul Zoo and soon had a litter of piglets. Now this is where the happy story turns into a tragedy. A brown bear, who also lived in the Kabul Zoo, attacked the cage where Kanzir and his family lived. Unfortunately, the female pig and the piglets did not make it, leaving Kanzir all alone after he was rescued. To this day, Kanzir lives alone in the zoo and has the caretakers for companions who he likes very much. Kanzir was both the first and last pig of Afghanistan. Rare topic. Back in the 1970s, an incredible discovery was made in northern Afghanistan. It all started with the city of Balkh when it decided to renovate one of its mosques. While digging through the mosque's ancient floors, construction workers found what they first thought was a hidden room. But little did they know that the room was in fact Alexander the Great's crypt. That's right, local historians couldn't believe their eyes. The antechamber contained an ebony wood tomb onto which many inscriptions were carved. They were written in different and mysterious languages. Some local historians and archeologists decoded the texts, which apparently explained the death of the emperor and his burial. However, three weeks after this astonishing discovery, the ebony tomb disappeared. It completely vanished and no one knows where it might've gone. As the tensions of the Cold War peaked in the 1980s, both Americans and Soviets blamed each other for having stolen Alexander the Great's tomb. To this day, some people doubt the story ever happened at all. What do you think? Did it really happen? And if so, where might it be? Remember to comment down below with the hashtag rare topic and let us know your opinion in relation to what we just showed on screen. And now to the next topic, number 19. The world's two biggest Buddhas are in Afghanistan. The Bamyan Valley is located in central Afghanistan, 130 kilometers northwest of the capital of Kabul. Along the side of a cliff in the valley, two Buddhas are carved into the sandstone. Each statue was very detailed, using a mix of mud with pieces of straw and finally covered in stucco. The two Buddhas have been carbon dated, which revealed both Buddhas date back to the Heftalites rule of Central Asia from the 5th to the 8th century CE. The smaller of the two Buddhas, also known as the Eastern Buddha, 38 meters, was found to be built around 570 CE, while the Western Buddha, 55 meters, was built around 618 CE. Though the layer of stucco had since worn away, we can determine that they were painted in order to add the expression of the Buddha's faces, hands, and robes. Colors such as carmine were used to do so. In addition, the larger of the two statues was given the name Sal Sal, which translates to the light shines through the universe, while the smaller Buddha was called Sha Mama, or Queen Mother. These two statues no longer exist in the Bamiyan Valley after the Taliban founder, Mullah Omar, gave the orders to destroy the two Buddhas on account that they were idols. This ordeal was not met with support, neither internationally nor from the Afghan people. Number 18. Afghanistan's Blue Mosque. Imagine the most radiant, crisp, and serene turquoise blue color you can. You might be surprised to know that the incredible color in your imagination covers Afghanistan's Blue Mosque. And to make it even more special, thousands of white doves live in 
and amongst the neighboring trees and can be seen covering the roof of the mosque as well as the nearby sidewalks. Now, the Blue Mosque's real name is Masjid e Kabul and is believed to house the tomb of Ali ibn Abi Talib, who was Muhammad's cousin. People pay tribute to his shrine every year. However, there is some dispute about who is buried in the Blue Mosque. Some believe that the tomb is occupied by someone who existed before Islam. The dimensions of the Blue Mosque have grown as multiple tombs for various political and religious leaders have been added. Rumor has it that a dove with any patches of color will turn into pure white when it comes near the mosque. Another legend exists about the mosque which explains that the mosque was buried when the Mongol armies were invading to protect it from destruction. Number 17. Spy satellites are revealing Afghanistan's lost empires. Afghanistan has remained a mystery for most archaeologists as the country's fragile security makes fieldwork virtually impossible. However, despite the war between the Taliban and the Kabul government, researchers have been able to uncover new historical locations in Afghanistan using commercial and spy satellites as well as U.S. military drones that can reach places too treacherous for researchers and archaeologists to travel to. The information that these satellites have uncovered unveils lost empires and trade routes that connect both the East and the West. 16th century caravanserais have been discovered across the Afghan desert, which unravels a trade and travel route covering the land between what is now Iran with southern India. The findings also add to previous understandings of the terrain. For example, they have found that the area near the Balkab River was even more populated than what was previously known by a lot. This new information will also help archaeologists uncover the Silk Road route that connected Europe and China, offering key pieces of information to find the center of the route. The preservation and continuation of these discoveries is very important for Afghanistan's cultural heritage, which has previously been taken advantage of on many occasions. Number 16. Band A Amir Lakes do you often think of an unending desert and daring mountains when someone mentions Afghanistan? While you might be partially right about Afghanistan's terrain in most areas, however, at the center of the country lies an array of deep blue lakes, six to be exact. These lakes are said to be the miracle work of Ali, also known as the son-in-law to the Prophet Muhammad. As the story goes, the king was so taken aback by the miracle and the beauty of the lakes that he converted to Islam right after. The location of the lake seems almost impossible as the beautiful pools of water sit right at the bottom of the second highest mountain range in the whole world, known as the Hindu Kush. Oddly enough, no plants are growing nearby the lakes. Instead, there are giant limestone cliffs that set the scene for a super intense Game of Thrones episode. Today, many locals visit the lakes for a day trip, but who knows? The spot might be open for tourists one day. Number 15. Hidden Treasures of Afghanistan Bactrian Treasure Finding hidden treasures is a great plot for a movie or a fun adventure to imagine. But did you know that this really happened in 1978? A whopping 20,600 ornaments, coins, gold, silver, and ivory, artifacts as well as jewelry pieces including a crown were found in the burial sites of men and women from all the way back to the first century. The site is known as Tilya Tepe, but has a few different spellings. This name translates to Golden Hill, which is very well suited for the precious archaeological site. The treasure found at Tilya Tepe is referred to as the Bactrian gold or Bactrian treasure. The coins that were discovered had various depictions on them, such as Parthian king Gotchus, Roman emperor Tiberius, and a lion with a taurine symbol. To further add to the plot of this movie-like discovery, the treasure went missing during the wars in Afghanistan. All of the stones, necklaces, medallions, and jewelry were nowhere to be found until 2003, when the collection of priceless objects was finally rediscovered. There will be a new museum built in the capital, Kabul, to house the treasure and keep it from being lost ever again. Number 14. Omar Mine Museum If you didn't know, Afghanistan is an intensely mined country. In fact, it is one of the most mined countries in the world. This alarming fact has led to the opening of the Omar Mine Museum in Afghanistan's capital of Kabul. The museum exhibits 51 different landmines, almost all 53 of the landmines found and used in Afghanistan. But the mines aren't the only military weaponry 
that can be found in the Omar Mine Museum. You can also find cluster bombs, airdrop bombs, and rockets at this rather harrowing museum. These mines have been claiming the lives of civilians for far too long. Many of them were children. Omar, or Organization for Mine Clearing and Afghan Rehabilitation, was conceived in order to demine Afghanistan and save civilians from a horrible fate. Omar has been around since 1990, and in that time has saved many lives while sacrifices some of their own to do this treacherous job. The Omar Mine Museum pays tribute to their members whose lives have been lost in the battle to save the Afghan people with a memorial plaque in the museum. Number 13, the giant blimp hovering over Kabul. American military is deployed everywhere, including the airspace above Kabul. The mammoth blimp stationed above the capital city is connected to NATO headquarters in Kabul and surveys the land at all times. The blimp is a point of contest for many people as it is certainly an invasion of privacy. Both the US and the Afghan people have varying opinions. Some US military officers offer their opinions that the blimp does virtually nothing in keeping the American people safe. There have even been bullet holes discovered in the blimp when it was brought down due to unfavorable weather. On the other hand, there was once an instance where the footage from the blimp revealed a car that had been filled to the brim with explosives. After discovering the footage, the explosives were able to be defused in time as to not hurt anyone. The blimp has become such a staple in the skyline of Kabul that even after a British military helicopter crashed into the blimp, rendering the inflated surveillance operation useless, a new one almost immediately replaced the old one in the following year, in 2016. Number 12, Darul Aman Palace. Did you know that there is a crumbling and abandoned ruin situated just outside Kabul that was once the beginnings of a palace at the center of a new capital city? This place is known as Darul Aman Palace, and it was not always as devastated as it looks today. The construction of the palace happened during the rule of Amanullah Khan from 1919 to 1929. It had an obvious Eurocentric style to the facade and structure, which would mimic the European-style city that Khan planned to build. However, before the palace was finished, as Khan had many opponents to his plans, the palace met an ill fate. It all started back in the 1970s, when it was first set on fire, then attacked in the 1990s, and further attacked by the Taliban in 2012. Now, the building is crumbling and wrecked, and is no longer a symbol of change in the future. Some of its walls still stand, carrying its message of hope and peace despite the horrors done to it. Perhaps it'll be restored in the future, but it sure isn't expecting guests anytime soon. Number 11, Skatistan. Skateboarding is not often associated with Afghanistan. In fact, before 2009, it wasn't at all. It all started when two Australian skateboarders, Oliver Perkovich and Sharna Nolan, came to Kabul in 2007 with three skateboard decks between the two of them. Then came something that no one could have imagined. The interest in the two Australian sport was unmatched. Soon enough, kids in Kabul would watch Perkovich and Nolan skate around and express their own interest in learning how to skate. Eventually, Perkovich and Nolan opened a skateboarding school for the kids of Kabul to learn. The school was a success. This led to the opening of Skatistan in 2009 the first official skateboarding school in Afghanistan. Not only was it the first of its kind, but it also allowed young girls to participate in skateboarding, as most other sports in Afghanistan were played only by the boys. Skatistan is now an Afghan NGO, a place for charity organizations to collaborate in order to bring more opportunities to the children of Afghanistan, as well as a place for disabled children to do crafts and attend art classes. Number 10, Chilzina and the 40 Steps of Kandahar. If climbing a mountain was too difficult, would 40 steps carved into the side of the mountain help? Well, you can find those 40 steps in Kandahar's westernmost mountains, also known as Chilzina. These 40 steps were the wish of Babur, the first emperor of the Mughal Empire. Babur's legacy was much like Timur of Genghis Khan's, or so he wanted it to be. He went on to conquer most of Central Asia and India, infiltrating his Persian culture as he went. He had the 40 steps made with the intention of telling his story as the reward for climbing to the top mountain was a recounting of his story 
etched into a hollow cave. In addition, you would be treated by two carved lions at the opening of the cave once you made your way to the top. Not to mention, these lions were chained even in stone. Babur wanted to control everything in his touch. The lions and the retelling of his story were no exception. It is also said that the story was carved by his son, Humayun. Number nine, rare statue believed to have originated in Afghanistan, seized at Port of Seattle. You might ever so often find a book that you bought a year ago and never finished, lost down the side of the bed, or a shirt that got lost for months in the back of your closet behind some clothes you meant to give away, but I bet it wasn't as crazy as a find as the statue from Afghanistan that was seized from a warehouse in the port of Seattle. How about that? Not only was this statue found a long way from home, but it has been said that it dates back to the third century. How the statue ended up in the warehouse was still quite mysterious, as the people who brought it over to the US stated that they received it way back in 1958 from a family member. Though the smuggling of artifacts does occur often, the stability of various political governments helps ward off this offense. The statue has been valued at $500,000. However, that price is only associated with the black market sale of artifacts. The statue is truly priceless to Afghanistan and harbors a lot of history. Number eight, Cybele Plate. In the National Museum of Afghanistan is filled with incredible artifacts, but there is one thing in particular that might catch your eye. It is the Ai Kanum plaque. This beautiful piece depicts two Greek goddesses, Nike and Cybele, who were riding in a chariot being pulled by lions. In addition to the Hellenistic goddesses that were various Eastern motifs such as crescent moon and a star, the disc is made completely of silver, but the details are engraved with gold. It was found in an archeological site in Ai Kanum between two jars against a wall. The location of the site makes sense for this discovery as the city was once a place used by the Greco-Bactrian leaders for a military center as well as an economic center. This city lasted till 145 BC. The site was discovered once again in 1961, but it was not until 1969 when the disc was discovered. To this day, the disc and what it depicts still hold some controversy. Some say that one of the figures is in fact Isis and not Nike. Therefore, the disc would not be a representation of victory if Nike was not included. There is also the notion that the disc depicted a real religious event. Number seven, Marjan the Lion Memorial. The story of Marjan the Lion isn't so cheerful. Marjan lived in captivity in the Kabul Zoo. Even after the Afghanistan Civil War in the 90s, he remained in the zoo and survived the turmoil. However, in 1995, a man, for a reason still not quite known, climbed into the paddock with Marjan. The lion did not like the disturbance and pounced on the man as any wild animal might. The man was mauled and proclaimed. But this was not the end for Marjan and his story, for the next day, the now deceased man's brother attempted to kill or hurt Marjan by throwing hand grenades at him. Marjan pounced on one and had his teeth blown right out and even lost his sight and hearing. Despite that, Marjan lived until 2002, another seven years after the debacle. The same cannot be said for the brother as he was after committing the crime to hurt Marjan. In the midst of the war going on in Afghanistan, locals made it a priority to see to Marjan's care when they could. A bronze statue is now erected at the zoo in Marjan's honor for survival in harsh conditions and terrible fate. Number six, people living in the mountains of Afghanistan. Afghanistan has been ransacked by war and turmoil throughout the years. This imposes the difficult task on the civilians to find new places to live when their towns and villages become uninhabitable. Many families have taken to the mountains of Afghanistan to live in caves hollowed out centuries ago. These families, too poor to rebuild their homes or their villages, now reside in these caves and have even had to move their mosque into a cave. This is all because of the Taliban, the civilians, ransacking and destroying their homes 
and subsequently blowing up the two statues of Buddha on the side of the mountain. The families that fled the scene survive in the mountains, unable to make their return to the ruined village. The caves are man-made and surely not made for favorable dwellings, especially when it rains. The villagers live in fear that the Taliban might return and the ever-present knowledge that they do not have enough money to rebuild their homes. Number five, Minaret of Jam. Perhaps you've heard of the lost city of Atlantis, but have you ever heard of Afghanistan's lost city of the Turquoise Mountain? There still exists a small piece of this lost city, the Minaret of Jam. Dating back to the 12th century, the minaret is said to have been connected to a mosque that has now disappeared, leaving only the minaret behind, although there is substantial evidence that this mosque was quite momentous in its time. Today, you can see only the minaret standing alone in a mountainous setting. It is said that the lost city of the Turquoise Mountains was that of absolute tolerance and acceptance, a place where all religions could exist together with no struggle or strife. However, the city was destroyed by the Mongol invasions. But the baked brick that makes up the 213 feet tall minaret still stand to this day, despite the invasion and the passage of time. These threats are still prevalent for the World Heritage Site and will hopefully overcome threats of today, such as earthquakes and continued warfare, as it did with the ones from thousands of years ago. Number four, nearly 100,000 year old mysterious manuscripts discovered in Afghanistan. To most, caves may not seem like the most exciting place to wander around in. However, there are many secrets and artifacts hidden in these dark places. A vast collection of 100 manuscripts were found in a cave in Afghanistan. It was soon discovered that these manuscripts were a thousand years old and belonged to a family who lived alongside the Silk Road. The family who owned these manuscripts were Jewish. However, upon investigation, the manuscripts had been written in many different languages, including Hebrew, Judeo-Persian, Judeo-Arabic, Aramaic, and Persian. It seemed to experts that the manuscripts were in fact buried in the cave by the owners, one of whom came from Bamyan. Amongst the manuscripts, there were personal letters as well as poems and legal documents which could give researchers insight into how Jewish people lived their daily lives in their communities in Afghanistan. There was even a record of who owned the owner of the manuscript's money or trade. Unfortunately, there were no illustrations amongst the manuscripts. Such personal findings can really uncover what it was like to personally live in Afghanistan nearly a thousand years ago. Number three, last operating synagogue in Afghanistan. There is only one remaining Jewish man living in Afghanistan, from 5,000 in 1948 to one in present day. The Jewish population has dispersed from Afghanistan. This resulted in the last operating synagogue in the 21st century, Afghanistan, leaving Zablon Simintov as the only Jewish person living in Afghanistan and the last operating synagogue on Flower Street in Kabul. There was a point where Simintov was joined by Ishak Levin as the only two Jewish people in Afghanistan. However, the two had a contentious relationship. Probably even more like a rivalry, the disbursement of the Jewish population was due to many factors, one being the Soviet invasion of Afghanistan in 1979. Despite this, and despite his family residing in Israel, Simintov remains faithful to his home in Afghanistan living in religious isolation, which often proves difficult when having to slaughter his own meat and to get the nearest rabbi in Uzbekistan to pronounce it kosher. The synagogue is still unscathed, though many have offered to take Simonov out of Afghanistan in the wake of the Taliban taking Kabul. He has since left his home and synagogue in Afghanistan. Number two, stupa of takht e rostam one may not associate Afghanistan with any other religion besides Islam. However, the history of Buddhism and Afghanistan is quite a remarkable one that not many know. While the Buddha statues of Bamiyan were destroyed in 2001, there still remain some excavated sites that represent Afghanistan's Buddhist history. Stupa of takht e rostam is one of those sites. Carved into the ground, there is a stupa 
that can be reached by crossing a small footbridge to reach a Harmaka building that is carved out of stone. There lies a number of monastic cells for meditation and holes to allow for some light to penetrate the building. The fact that the stupa has been built into the ground versus above the ground puzzles researchers and historians. Some say it was for camouflage purposes, and some propose that it was for combating the weather and terrain, though we may never know. There are no decorative elements to the site, however the ability to construct a building in such a way is enormously impressive as the surrounding trenches are roughly 8 meters in depth all around the stupa. Number 1. The Mysterious Ancient Nine Domes Mosque of Northern Afghanistan It's virtually impossible to picture anything from a thousand years ago, right? Until you've seen the Nine Domes Mosque in Northern Afghanistan. This mosque is rumored to date back to the year 794, or the 8th century. There is no exact date or personage we can attach the building of the mosque to. There remains remnants of its columns and suggests that it was decorated with blue lapis lazuli. The conditions in which it survived is somewhat of a miracle, considering the climate of Afghanistan and the materials that make up the mosque. Though the decorative aspect, the clog, and the setting in which the mosque stood have all since washed away, it is truly wonderful to imagine it in all its glory. The war in Afghanistan postponed the excavation of the mosque, which happened to be in 2006, though it was seen by an archaeologist from America in the 1960s. According to some researchers, the time at which the mosque was built means that it could have taken the spot of a Buddhist monastery as the Buddhist religion was on the cusp of being ousted from that region. There is even evidence that there were flower designs on the facade that happened to predate Islam. What other mysteries might we be able to find one day in Afghanistan? Do you think there are more discoveries just unwaiting to be unveiled? Let us know in the comments below. Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now.